The last topic we're going to cover in this tutorial is pagination. We're going to implement a simple pagination approach so that users are able to view links in the smaller chunks rather than having an extremely long list. First, let's prepare our React components for this new functionality. We're going to slightly adjust the current routing setup. Here's the idea. The link list component will be used for two different use cases. The first one is to display the top 10 voted links. And its second use case is to display all new links in a list where users can paginate them. Open up app.js and adjust the render method like so. We are going to add two new routes, top and new slash page. The second one reads the value for page from the URL, so this information is available inside the components being rendered. In this case, it's the link list. The root route redirects to the first page of the route where new posts are displayed. We need to add some logic here to account for the two different responsibilities that link list now has. Open linklist.js and add three arguments to the all links query by replacing the all links query definition with the following. The query now accepts arguments that we'll use to implement pagination and ordering. Skip defines the offset where the query will start. If you pass the value of example 10 to this argument, it means that the first 10 items of the list will not be included in the response. First defines the limit, or how many elements you want to load from that list. Say you're passing the 10 for skip and 5 for first. You'll receive items 10 to 15 from the list. But how can we pass the variables when using the GraphQL container, which is fetching data under the hood? We need to provide arguments right where you're wrapping your component with the query. So in linklist.js, let's replace the current export statement with the following. We're now passing a function to GraphQL that takes in the props of the component, own props, and allows us to retrieve information about the current page from the router, in this case, own props.match.params.page. And we're going to use it to calculate the chunk of links that we need to retrieve with first and skip. Also note that you're including the ordering attribute created at descending for the new page to make sure that the newest links are displayed first. The ordering for the top route will be calculated manually based on the number of votes for each link. We also need to define links per page, which will be a constant, and we need to import that into the link list component. Open up the constants folder and add the following definition. Now let's adjust the import statement from constants in linklist.js to include our new constant. Alright, now we need to add functionality for a user switching between pages. First, let's add two button elements to the bottom of the link list. Open up linklist.js and update the render function as follows. Since the setup is slightly more complicated now, we're going to calculate the list of links to be rendered in a separate method. In linklist.js, add the following method implementation. For the new page, you'll simply return all the links returned by the query. That's logical since we don't have to do any manual modifications to the list that is going to be rendered. If the user loaded the component from the top route, you'll sort the list according to the number of votes and return the top 10 links. In linklist.js, add the following two methods that will be called when the buttons are pressed. These buttons represent previous and next. The implementation of these are pretty simple. We're retrieving the current page from the URL and implementing a sanity check to make sure that it makes sense to paginate back and forth. Then we simply calculate the next page and tell the router where to navigate. The router will then reload the component with a new page in the URL that will be used to calculate the right chunk of links to load. 
Let's run the app by typing yarn start in a terminal and use the new buttons to paginate through our list of links. Through all the changes that we made to all links query, you'll notice that the update functions of our mutations don't work anymore. That's because read query now also expects to get past the same variables that we defined before. Just a quick note, read query essentially works the same way as the query method on the Apollo client instance we used to implement search. However, instead of making a call to the server, it will simply resolve the query against the local store. If a query was fetched from the server with variables, Read Query also needs to know the variables to make sure it can deliver the right information from the cache. With that information, let's open up linklist.js and update the update cache after vote method to look as follows. All that's happening here is the computation of the variables depending on whether the user is on the top or new route. Finally, we need to adjust the implementation of update when new links are created. Open createLink.js and replace the current contents of createLink like so. Since we don't have the link per page constant available in this component yet, make sure to import it onto the top of the file. You have now added a simple pagination system to the app. You are allowing users to load links in small chunks instead of loading them up front. This app looks pretty awesome.